I'm feeling today to cover a little bit from the basics, just to start from the seeming ground level. And then see what moves from there. So what is actually going on here? What is actually going on here when we say satsang, when we say coming to your own truth, we say things like this. What is going on is that it seems that one who comes into satsang comes with the sense that I as a person am here to get some peace, joy which lasts because I as a person have found that I have tried many different things and I don't seem to get this happiness, peace and joy which lasts. Yes, I have had glimpses, glimpses of this. And I come and I go through these glimpses and I feel that it will last through relationships, through money, through healthy body. We feel that something will last, but it never does. The world keeps changing, everything around us keeps changing, this body keeps changing, our relationships keep changing. So it doesn't last. So the person says, I give up on all of this, I give up on all of this stuff and I want to find some everlasting peace. How do I get this? And then we must have heard from somewhere or we must have read somewhere or we must have seen a video or something and it seems like here in satsang, in spirituality I will find some peace. You, see, you can call it peace, you can call it freedom, you can call it liberation. But basically this one comes into satsang looking for some stability. It's tired of the ups and downs of life, typically. Then what happens? They walk into satsang completely clear that I am a person who wants this, this and this. <coughs> like walking into a shop and saying this is my list of things that I want. Peace, tick, happiness, tick, joy, tick. This is the grocery list we want to check out, check off in our list when we come into satsang. But what happens in satsang, especially in the satsang which is very direct, someone asks you this question, are you a person in the first place? So we'll come to what your checklist is, but first can we truly discover if you are really what you say you are? You come into my shop saying I am this, can I have some evidence of this which you claim that you are? And this question is asked for a straight off. <laughs> straight off this question is asked. For some this question is too strong. Oh, no, 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 I am here for my checklist and you are asking for my ID, I am willing to pay, you see, I am willing to pay for my checklist, tell me what it takes. We say, no, no, first, before we get to what you feel must happen here, let's become clear about this identity which you claim to profess. I am this person that wants something. So it is this initial openness to this question, to question our identity, it seems like is the most time consuming aspect of satsang. All the effort, all the seeming effort is to get us to look 
for this identity and to take the focus away from our shopping list for some time. Now, if someone after this kind of directness still stays in satsang, then what happens? Then there seems to be a phase of dissolution. All these ideas start to get dissolved. As we keep, as we start looking for the person, we start realizing <coughs> the irrelevance of all the beliefs that we have carried about ourselves. Because all these concepts are just attached to something that does not exist. And every time when we check and we don't find who is the one, who is the one even who wants peace, who is the one that wants happiness, we don't find this one, then the force of desires, then the force of wanting, force of running from things, all this starts to abate because you cannot find the center of desire. You cannot find the one who has all of these expectations. You see? So a lot of this dissolution can start. In, it can look very different. In every expression, it can look different. Some will laugh through all of it, some will cry, some will sit seriously. But basically, this is what is happening. Every time we check and look to find the person, we cannot find. And there can be a period where we are just stunned. How could it be that we were in this belief for so long, belief of being a person, and here when I'm looking, I just cannot identify it. cannot identify the owner of this body, cannot find the one who has relationships, cannot find anyone who wants security or anything at all. So then, we come to this seeing more and more that no person here exists. There is nobody here to suffer. So this is how it starts usually, usually. Then some question might arise through the teacher or through your own intuitive sense. Okay, the person does not exist. I am not that who I always presumed myself to be. Then who am I? And it is great auspiciousness if this question arises. You cannot find this identity called the ego, called the person. But I do sense that I exist. I cannot deny my existence. Only I am confused now about who I am. What is it that I am? Then the teacher says, just look at what is here. Unchanging, unmoving, what is here? He says, don't be interested in that which is coming and going. Because if God is real, if the self is real, then it cannot come and go. What is it that is ever present here? And then we realize that that which is ever present is my own sense that I exist, I am, not the thought I exist, not the thought I am, just the sense that I exist, I am.
therefore the teacher says can you stop being now can you stop being and it becomes clear that no of course not i cannot stop being there is a presence of i here there is a presence i am here which cannot be switched off and then we can say i am this this is always here i am that i am this is your own self discovery as god because it is god who said i am that i am but the label is not important and this is very beautiful because we find that every single appearance appears only in the presence of this i am so this i am it is revered in all traditions all traditions you can call it om you can call it atman any consciousness being god self many even call it self okay so this we come to this beautiful point of discovery and most traditions they stop here actually it is enough come to this discovery i am that i am and this is very very beautiful and you see that every single expression arises out of this sense i am every single expression even the expression of different forms of god himself are just a expression from this i am from here as unassociated being just this pure i am if there is an urge for krishna to be here and consciousness itself appears to take the form of krishna and is here now even before now it says i want to taste myself as shiva and shiva is here jesus jesus is here consciousness is completely unlimited and so many of you have come to this realization of this sense of being but there is something in the mind which underestimates this you see there is the beauty of this beingness so we can say that we came with this just a belief that i am a person started off with just a belief and i'm coming to the discovery that i have always been this presence this presence of god it is the discovery that i have always been this not that i have now become this after such some that i have become something always been this a 
for some of you, this naturally an even deeper question might arise. It says, I am aware of even this presence. Even this presence of I am, I am aware of. There is awareness of this being. And it's completely clear that there is awareness of being just like there is awareness of phenomenal entities, objects. Therefore, we can say that it is the same to say I am aware, <coughs> I am aware of the presence is the same as saying I know that I am aware of the presence. It is the same as saying I am aware that awareness is here. Otherwise we would not say I am aware of the presence. You know that there is awareness of presence. It means you are aware that there is awareness even of presence. Therefore, whatever the content might be, it might be this presence or it might be some other, it might be a thought, it might be some sensation, it might be an external physical object, but you are clear that there is awareness of this. Therefore, you are already aware that there is awareness here. To be able to say that I am aware means that you know it. Directly. For you this is the simplest thing and for the mind it is the impossible thing because there is no phenomena which is experienced. In this way, the awareness of awareness actually is the only non-phenomenal experience. It comes only the only other thing which comes close to this is the experiencing of time. You do not taste it phenomenally, yet you are aware of the movement of time. In that way, at least you can experience it. But for awareness, being aware of itself, you, even the movement cannot be It's just simply here. So we are not doubting the existence of awareness. But what we are always doubting is, I'm not sure whether I got it. And yet in that same instant we say, yes, there is awareness of object, there is awareness of something. That means it's clear that it is awareness of. It is not beingness of an object. You're not aware of, you're not saying, I'm being an object. You're saying, I'm aware of an object. <laughs> to be able to say this itself means that it is seen.
it is seen that I am aware that I am aware I know that I am aware and when checked I cannot find any space between myself and this awareness no distance between myself and this awareness I find nowhere where awareness is not therefore I see that wherever to check this I must be there to check for I am everywhere that awareness is I find no separation, no distance between myself and this awareness can you say that again? Like, can you just say to when we check is there anywhere that awareness is not? What do you mean by that? Yeah? Do you mean wherever I am there is awareness? Yes, yeah, the same thing. So we can say that to say that I am here means that there is an awareness that I am here. So we cannot now find any difference between saying I am awareness. So this sense of difference or some separation between myself and awareness itself we cannot find. Even if there was an idea that there is something prior to awareness then awareness must be there to be aware of it. So, we see that I, this is my truest nature, my absolute nature this awareness which is aware even of the presence of me. Now the mind will, if it's got some energy left, it will pull all the stops. And it will be things like, I don't get it still, but so what? Nothing really happened. How does this help you? All this kind of resistance can come. And yet you see that all of this is seen. I am aware of all of this and it is just coming and going and I am still here. Whatever the appearance might be, it is coming and going. And I am just aware of it. It really does not touch me. Nothing happens to me no matter what the appearance is. This awareness remains untouched, unmoving through time and space. The play of time and space happen inside me actually. See? So we started off with a, with a belief, with no evidence, just a belief and very circumstantial evidence that I am a person. Then we said, I find no person. When I look, I find nothing. No person is here. And yet I cannot deny my existence that I am here, I cannot deny this. Therefore, I must be this presence. I am. And then something can say, even this being, I am aware of it. I am aware that there is something called awareness of this being. Therefore when we ask the question, am I aware now? 
you simply seen that awareness is here. And after it is seen that awareness is here, then the mind comes and says, oh, because you are aware of object, therefore we can come to this conclusion that awareness is here, not before that. But see what is actually happening. There is already awareness of these thoughts. That means you see that there is awareness of these thoughts. There is awareness that there is awareness of thought. There is awareness that there is awareness of being. And I know that these simplest of words can seem like they are the most confusing abstract things you ever heard. For some of you it can seem like this. It's the most confusing abstract thing I have ever heard. I make no sense of it. Don't work hard for that. Don't try to put an effort to get this. Let these words unfold on their own in your heart. So don't, when you do the inquiry, don't do it with a sense of, I must get it, I must get it. Because it will always come at the end and say, no, still you didn't get it. So I must get it, the get it must come only as confirmation from the mind. You see. And the mind has no idea about this. We left it far behind. It is just another projection of beingness. So we left it far behind. What gives me the conviction that I am aware of something, whatever the something might be? How do I know that I am aware of it? And we are sure that we are aware of it. Whatever it is that you might see, you see first that there is a seeing of it that is happening. It is the content which is moving, the seeing itself is not moving. And I don't mean the phenomenal seeing happening through the eyes, the sensory seeing. I'm talking about this pure perceiving, this sense of being aware. So there is something which is here, unmoving, and content is constantly changing, be it thoughts, be it sensations, be it appearances, be it even states. And say that I went to sleep, I woke up, I had a dream. Who is this which is aware of all of these states coming and going? So what happened now? The one who came with the checklist of things to buy now realizes that I was not that at all. I'm not a thing at all. I'm just this awareness which cannot be found in this time and space. And then the checklist has no meaning left. And because the checklist itself has no meaning left, then you find that my own true nature is here, which is unmoved by the presence of any states. And you find that all of this love, peace, joy, appear in my service. I am not in service to them. They appear for me.
So we can say that nothing happened through all of this because this one was always this awareness. Or we can say that the best thing happened. Both are okay. We not to be stuck with terminology. And it's okay, even if you want to be stuck with terminology, it's okay. <laughs> to come to this true seeing that I am the seeing itself, to come to this awareness of awareness itself. cannot say anything about it. Actually, we cannot even say it's the purest or most innocent, nothing. No attribute makes sense here. This is all that, this beautiful auspicious play of satsang is about. The rest is just the sideshow. Life is without any mental meaning. Life does not need any mental interpretation. Life does not need any mental understanding. And I am that primal seeing which sees life. That primal seeing which is untouched even by life. What can happen in this life that can have meaning for me? And that in which life takes life. What is here that can be a companion to the eternal life? And how can I get attached to that which is just no longer than a blink?
and that in which time is born. What can time give to me? That in which space is born. I need no space. And that which gives life to life. And that which death cannot kill. All of these are my toys. Life and death, time and space. And I am here now. No name you can give to me. Yet I am that from which all names and forms come. Neither awake nor asleep. Not free or bound.
I am not part of this universe. And yet this universe is apart from me. You can never find me in an appearance. I do not appear or disappear. cannot find me with knowledge because I cannot be known. No practice or effort can bring us closer because there is distance between us. cannot find me with anything that you do. <coughs> because I am that which you already are. 